Hi! Welcome to September 17th. Today I'm going to talk about serial communication and what it means to you. So let's go to the board. It's over there. Serial communication is where you are transmitting data one bit at a time. You know, you got a single line here and da 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 And each one of these things represents one bit of data. Cool thing about serial communication is it only requires, well, I was about to say one line, which is this, but it actually requires a reference as well, which is to say ground. So what, Pete, this is what we've done all the time. Yes, 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 yes. But there's also parallel communication. Parallel communication is really cool because you can send a whole bunch of data all at once. So you can send like uh, a full byte of data, but it requires eight, nine lines plus a reference, right? So you've got eight lines, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then your reference, which is not a ground. And each one of these uh, will go to a certain state and then you clock it into another register somewhere else. Da, 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 da. But what we're talking about today, serial communication, one bit at a time. Now, some examples of this are RS-232, RS-485, USB is serial communication. UART, SPI, I2C. These are interesting to us because these are the primary ways that um, a microcontroller will communicate externally of itself. Specific to today, I'm going to talk about that guy. Universal Asynchronous Receiver. TX short for transmitter because I've ran out of board. This is an asynchronous form of communication. There is also USAR. T, USART, which is universal synchronous slash asynchronous receiver slash transmitter. What they do is they extract the synchronizing clock from the data stream, and I'm not clear on how that's done, and I've never needed to do it. I'm sure there's a reason why this exists. Somebody in the comments is gonna say, I personally have never used the, uh, a USART. A UART actually refers to the hardware portion of a microcontroller that, that does this action. But oftentimes in a microcontroller, uh, you look in the data sheets and it's actually UART slash USART. So you can set them up different ways. Say you've got a data stream coming in uh, and you've got a microcontroller. Here's your microcontroller pin, okay? The first thing this does is it goes to a shift register. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The whole system is synchronized to the master clock, okay? So your processor has got a crystal a resonator, what have you. So for example, I'll just say it's 16 megahertz. And what happens is that you set up in a register within the microcontroller, a certain divisor of the master clock. And that starts this thing running. A start bit will come through and the thing will go, aha. I think I hear something coming. And then after a predetermined time based on this, which is actually called the baud rate generator, it checks again to see, is it still going? It kind of eliminates spurious signals that way. And if it's still within the start bit, it goes, okay, we've got real data coming in. So now it will start going through and clocking the data in one bit at a time according to this. Once it gets like the full number of bits done, it sends that out to another place called the RX receive buffer. The receive buffer can be one byte, two bytes. It's two bytes in the Atmega 328. I think it was like seven bytes in the ARM7 I used to work with. So data's here. Uh, the UART sends a flag someplace. There's a flag register. Hey, hey, there's data, man. Then you go read this thing and you take the data out and then it waits for another byte. And this might be getting ahead of myself too, but sometimes if you've got more data coming in, uh, it'll overrun the receive buffer. Then you'll get another flag that says, you just overran the buffer. So then you gotta deal with that. This is the hardware aspect of uh, the receive. Now there's also a transmit line. Works basically the same way. You send a, a, a byte of data to um, the transmit buffer 
and it waits for like, it wants to make sure that it doesn't have other data that it's currently sending and it'll wait some period of time and make sure, okay, everything's cool. Okay, okay. And then it will clock out that data on the TX line, TX, oof, bad. And yeah, same sort of way, da, da 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 according to the baud rate generator and the divisor that you put in here. Now these things are, are, are really, really versatile. There are predetermined standards of baud rate, like 9600, uh, 14 something, uh, 19200, 38, 400, bits per second. But when you are configuring a UART at this level, you can make that thing whatever you want. You don't have to conform to any standard, provided that whatever you're talking to, you're also configuring in the exact same way. If you want to talk to something that adheres to the standards, like 9600, etc., then you, this, you're not going to be able to muck with that number. It's got to be something very specific. It's very powerful to set something up like this because there's a lot of versatility. You can configure this for like somewhere between five and nine bits if you want. But for the purposes of our talk, we're gonna stick to eight bits because that's the standard. The way that data is encoded is by ASCII, American Standard Code Information Interchange. Holy cow, remember those words. ASCII is a uh, serial representation of uh, it, it bit patterns of uh, letters, data, what have you. It's really a seven bit standard, but it's we, we generally use it in eight bits and just leave the, uh, <laughs> the bit that we don't use as a zero. So what a UART will do starts out at a high level. UART's just cruising along, sitting at like, let's say 3.3 .3 volts and ground is down here. And the reason it sits at 3.3 .3 volts is, uh, believe it or not, a holdover from telegraph days. Dude walks into the general store, I wanna send a telegraph. And you know, other dude says, yes sir, yes sir. And he goes to check the gear. And if the gear's not sitting at a high voltage, they know the gear is jacked and they need to send somebody out on horse. The UART upon deciding, okay, I'm gonna transmit something. What it will do is it will have a start bit and the start bit goes low for one bit period. Then after that, it starts clocking data out. I chose an example of um, capital K. Well, that doesn't look like a capital. And what that is, is for B in hex. Okay, so it's this is an eight bit value. As I said, it's seven bits, but we leave the eighth bit. Specifically, what that is, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one? Yeah. What the UART will do is it will start clocking out the least significant bit first, and then it will clock these out sequentially until it gets to the last one. For a capital K, what you're gonna see, so it's gonna start out here, right? So you're gonna have a low there, and then you're gonna get like a high there, and a high there, and then a low, one, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, and then it's gonna go high again. So this is our start bit, and then we start clocking data out. Then this is called the stop bit. Now, as I said before, when we were talking about the UART hardware, you can configure this to um, a lot of different things. You're always gonna have a start bit, but you might choose one or two stop bits. And I don't know why you would, Somebody can say so in the comment section, please, if you know the significance of this, because it's basically going to be, maybe it's just spacing between characters, but you can configure it for uh, stop bits. You can configure it for a parity bit. What is parity? Parity is uh, a really simple form of error checking. You can like select even, even parity or odd parity, which is to say, uh, the receiver will check to see how many high bits you have. And based on how many high bits you have, if you've got even parity selected, it'll, you know, make the last bit a one uh, or a zero if you choose odd parity or eh, something like that. Okay, some I'm sure somebody somewhere uses this. Uh, generally, uh, we don't. I don't think I've ever used parity, but I'm sure some people do. But it's not error correction, it's just error checking. To wrap up the uh, configuration of, of the data frame, this is called a data frame, right? Uh, you can select it for between like five and nine bits generally of data. You can select the number of stop bits that you want. You can select whether or not you want uh, even parity, odd parity, or no parity. Generally, 
people always seem to select, uh, you know, eight, one, none, which is eight data bits, one stop bit, no parity, and then a baud rate associated with that. The vast majority of the time for stuff, generic stuff that you might see, you'll probably see 9600. If it's an application that needs a lot of bandwidth, uh, 115, 200 perhaps, or higher, the data rates can go quite high. Configuring a UART at a very low level um, which is to say, I mean, like, like the things that when I was talking about the hardware, right? You got to configure, um, you know, you got to know your clock speed, which isn't a challenge really. Um, you've got to know uh, your baud rate and calculate a divisor and put that in a register. You've got to figure out, okay, do I want interrupts? Do, uh, am I going to, uh, you know, what's my data frame going to be? Da, 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 da. There's a lot of stuff to configure and there's a lot of stuff to watch. I've, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, I'm not an Arduino expert, but the IDE makes it so simple to do this. I think you know, I, I'm going to show you like the three commands in my code that I used to do this. I wasn't able to set up an and maybe they have a, a library where you can set up more and more of, of the variables, but you don't have to, right? They make it really simple to do this at 8-1 none at a given baud rate. So simplicity is awesome, but you give up power, man. You give up the power. Knowledge is power. That's why sometimes I still like to do it at low level, right? Um, it's, it's part of the engineering thing, right? Why do you go to engineering school when you do all this stuff? You make it so easy to do. Well, you know what? You go to engineering school because when your stuff doesn't work, you need to know the background information to go figure out why it doesn't work. But generally, if you're sticking with the Arduino IDE and their libraries, they've already tested all that stuff. So you don't really have to, but you're sacrificing your own knowledge and your own ability to get in and do it more. I challenge you, America, go learn UARTs. A couple of trouble points. Way back in the day when we did mostly picks and we were playing with like the cheapest resonators we could find, we would have uh, a batch of of um, boards that we built that wouldn't communicate properly over USB or with each other or what have you. And the reason is because the resonators sucked and they weren't accurate and they lots of jitter and the frequencies are all over the place. And so you had to tweak that baud rate divisor to get the communication just right. These days we've got all that stuff sorted out and it's right every time. We're using quality parts. The setup is simple. You don't have to do anything. It's it's just really, really easy. You have to be careful. You can't set up more than two devices on a UART system like, um, you know, I2C, uh, an SPI, you can set up uh, with a number of different devices all on the same bus and you can address them independently either by, uh, in the case of I2C, it's an address that it sends out. In the case of uh, SPI, it's, you know, a chip select line. So it requires another line to select it. You can connect a bunch of devices together. Uh, with the UART, it's basically you got two. You got an RX line, you got a TX line, you connect them crosswise. So TX goes to RX, RX goes to TX and you're done. I have put sniffers in, like if I need to see what's happening, I'm going to show you this on the scope. You can plug in a, you know, an oscilloscope to it. It's a high impedance line. It's not going to mess it up, generally speaking. You can put on more receive lines if you don't need to, uh, you know, you can't hook up two transmit lines together to a single receive because that's basically two outputs that you're connecting together. And if those both go, you know, if one goes high and one goes low, you've got a short to ground. So you can't do that. In spite of that, I have never unwittingly uh, or otherwise destroyed a, a hardware UART. I've tried. I've done some really stupid things to UARTs, but I have not managed to destroy one. I'm sure somebody out there has. Here we are in my example. And you remember that uh, the, the letter that I chose was a capital K. The reason I chose that is because I wanted uh, a, a, an asymmetric pattern like I didn't want just, you know, fives will be just a square wave. We don't want that. You want to be able to see the, the you know, where the bits are falling. Uh, and what you're looking at here, uh, here's, here's uh, trace one, which is one Arduino, and here's trace two. And all they're doing is, you know, chattering back and forth, sending Ks to each other. I'm going to expand the time base a little bit. So what did we expect to see? Well, K is um, 
4B in hex, right? So you've got a 4 and a B, and 4 is 0, 1, 0, 0, B is 1, 0, 1, 1. So we're triggered on the first bit. This is the start bit. So this is the line that comes out here. Eh, pretend that number's not there. Drops down. Here's the start bit. So the first thing we expect to see is the backwards B. So we should see a 1 and a 1. Now if that's 1 bit width, then this is 2, right? So we've got a 1 and a 1, and then we've got a 0 and a 1. So sure enough, that, that seems to be exactly what we see. Then we have two zeros, 0, 0, and a 1, 0. So what we've got is backwards 4B which is exactly what we expected to see. And then it goes high again forever. Now the data rate that I chose was 9600. Expand the time base a little bit. This is one bit and the bit width is 104 microseconds. Now this scope is kind enough to give me one over delta T, delta T being the difference between those two cursors. And it says 9.62 kilohertz, close enough. I'm transmitting at 9600 baud which is 9,600 bits per second. I've demonstrated the bit pattern and it's exactly what we expect it to be. So check this out. I'm going to hit reset on one of the two Arduino Pro Minis. Now we have our data again. Now watch the bottom one. It's going to very slowly, oh, goodbye. Oh no, where did it go? I'm lost in a sea of data. Oh, oh here he comes. So what's going on here? Well, it looks like, to me, that the one on number one, on, on, on trace one, is actually running a little bit faster than the one on number two, right? There's a five second delay on each of these, I, I realize that. But because the, the, the data frames are kind of sliding around a little bit and they're finding their own equilibrium, I think we can conclude that the clock on the first one is a little bit faster than the clock on the second one. Nothing's perfect, electronics certainly aren't. Here's um, not all of the code in my example. Here's the pertinent parts that are, you know, to, to the UART. You set it up in the setup section with serial begin, serial dot begin 9600 in parentheses. It's done. I don't gotta worry about a divisor. I don't gotta worry about uh, frames. I don't gotta worry about nothing. That's it. From there, it sends a character first and both of the pro minis do this. And then it goes, uh, this is in the loop, right? So if serial available, and this, this returns like a, you know, a true or a false or a one or a two, eh, I can't remember, but it's a, you know, basically a Boolean thing. I forgot a command. Serial dot read. And you throw this into a variable like a equals serial dot read. You define a as a byte. So you basically, uh, serial read equals this, or you know, this equals serial read and uh, just to take it out of the receive buffer. I'm not gonna do anything with it. I don't care what the value is. Um, but if I did, if I was looking for a specific letter or a specific value, you know, it's, a, it's an eight bit value. That's, that's the truth of it. Then I could do something with it and then, you know, act accordingly. Um, in this case, I'm not. All I'm doing is grabbing it off the receive buffer and then I'm sending back another one. And then I stick a delay in here because I found if I don't, all the characters kind of go <laughs> like that and then you can't really see what's going on. That's the whole code. There's the demonstration of uh, serial communication by means of a UART quicker and dirtier. Next time we're gonna do uh, SPI and I2C and I'll have some such example of that. Keep the questions and comments coming. Questions, you can send them to to feedback at sparkfun.com with according to Pete in the subject line. Comments go yay down there, pointy bit down there. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye.